A strong element in Business Objects Cloud is its capability of comparing actuals, budgets, forecasts, and even rolling forecasts on a permanent level. You can work with different versions uh, and various accounts, and this allows you to quickly compare and even simulate the three core elements of the closed loop portfolio. My name is Ivo van der Zand, SAP Business Analytics, and I'm going to explain to you how this works and how you can load uh, the various versions of your data into your Business Objects Cloud model and create stories on top of it. The source data that I'm uh, using is a very simple Excel file where I have uh, every time uh, 10 stores that have a metric. In this case, as you can see on my first worksheet, these are all the actuals. Uh, so the actuals for 10 stores for um, January, the same actuals for February, and the same actuals for <clears throat> March. Um, for the different stores, I also have the budget metrics. So again, the same 10 stores, the same uh, January 2016, February, and March, and their budget metrics, and over here, their forecast metrics. Let's, how, uh, let's show you how this is being populated within Business Objects Cloud. So I go back to my uh, cloud application, and we are going to create a simple model. So um, as you can see, as of uh, Wave 21, we have a complete new interface, so um, it's way more easier to use. So I click Create Model. And I'm going to create a model from a file, in this case, the Excel file that we have seen. So I select that source file, which is this one on top. And uh, I start um, creating my, um, populating my actual figures first. So I'm going to uh, select that file, import. Here's the data imported into my file. And very importantly, I'm going, uh, first of all, and that's uh, the most important exercise you do, is that you tick the planning enabled uh, enablement capability on the right-hand side. As you can see over here are my stores, which I, uh, in modeling uh, terminology, I'm going to assign as accounts. And uh, so it's now uh, of the type account type, uh, my metric, is of course a measure as you can see and the dates that I have I'm going to mark them as a time dimension uh, for every planning model you at least need a time dimension uh, let me give my model a, a simple name so I'm going to call it test create the model and it now loads from my Excel file, the actual data. Over here is my model. Again, a set only loaded with actual data. So my stores as accounts that you can see over here. Um, I have one uh, category, of course, because I only added the actual numbers for the moment. And I need to adjust uh, my time hierarchy. Uh, I want to look back, let's say two months and looking ahead, I'll choose for three. And uh, my model one still, well, I make it a bit longer. Um, let's go over here as of to look back. <clears throat> so I'm going to store it like this. I save it. And I go back to my overview to load the budget and the uh, planning data. Uh, because if you use several, several versions of data, <clears throat> you load them uh, individually um, uh, after each other. So I've now loaded only the actuals, as you could see, and I'm now going back to my model and um, picking up the planning data. So I select my model, and I'm going to import additional data. Again, import from file. I select my source file. And now I select my budget tab, and uh, I want to populate it in the target model that we just created. So I'm going to import, 
And as you can see on the screen in a second, I need to map my data correctly right now. As you can see over here, so the store is automatically mapped at the time also, and my measure, I need to map that. So what I do, I tick the measure. I'm now going to indicate that I want, instead of actuals, loading my budget data. And I give that version a name. Let's call it budget for simplicity. And um, <clears throat> I want to append that data to my model. Yes, and so I finish my mapping, finish up, and now the second uh, cluster of data being the budget data is being loaded. We do that ex exercise for the last time again for my uh, forecast data. Again, I tick the model and <clears throat> tick import from file. And again, select my source file, the same one as we used earlier, now indicating that I want to load my forecast data. And again, I have to uh, do this exercise of mapping again. So the data is coming in. I'll just verify whether everything is still okay. So <clears throat> I'm now going to append my budget data, uh, forecast data, excuse me. forecast and finish my mapping. Here it is. I can verify my model just before we start analyzing. Let me open it. And uh, now I can easily show that we have now Instead of one, three categories, I have data for actuals, budgets, and for forecasts. So save my model. And now I'm going to create a new story based on this model. <clears throat> um, clicking new stories, uh, just um, uh, a sidestep. Um, as you can see, there are now, as of wave 21, there are also templates that you can use very useful for dashboards, uh, presentation reports, or boardroom stories. Let me create with a blank canvas script, and I'm going to uh, add a chart. And the model that I'm going to use is the one <clears throat> that we just created together. So the test version. So I'm going to add a chart right now. And uh, let us have a look at um, the measure for store number, I just pick one, store number three. And I want to have a look at that per my uh, per time, the only dimension that I have. Quickly drill down. Uh, we had three months of data, so I'm going to go to my lowest level of month. And uh, as you can see over here, I have for store three the actuals for January, February, and March. If I now want to start comparing, um, what I do is to uh, I add a color dimension for category. So we had three categories. And as you can see, I have now my actuals over here uh, colored in black. I'll make them white, confirming the Hickert IBCS rules. And I'm going to add my two versions that we've loaded later on budget, which I mark as with this pattern. And I'm going to add the forecast, and we mark that as this pattern. And voila, over here you are. You have now in one chart your actuals, budgets, and forecast compared uh, in one graph. We uh, can go one step further. What we can do if I uh, tick the properties channel, um, uh, I can add a so-called variance um, line by opening the variance report. And uh, over here, if I go back and I select, for example, the actuals for store three, so I tick version actuals, and I say I want to compare that to store three versions budget, and I can mark the display options as percentage then over here, you have the graph that compares actuals, budgets, and forecasts, and also has the 
different absolute and percentage comparisons of both. A next step that we can do is uh, having a look at our planning data and change the planning data to see what the effect uh, is uh, to our current model. So I'm going to click the plus uh, chart for a new page in my story, and I'm going to add <clears throat> uh, for my existing model, my planning sheet. Over here it is. And over here you can see for the different stores, the actuals, budgets, and forecasts that I have. And I'm going to add my time dimension so that we can change uh, the time and let's uh, the uh, per, per month. And I'm going to drill down a little bit and let us have a look at store three, the example that we, uh, that we took. And um, over here, drill down. And let me, <clears throat> over here, I have my three indicators with 37, which we can find back in our story as my uh, budgeted amount for store three in Q1. And uh, now let us uh, change this uh, budget to a little bit uh, higher number. I'll, uh, I'll just take an example. So I'm uh, going to key in uh, 42. And <clears throat> I'm uh, going to uh, click that button again and to try to spread uh, my data um, over, the, uh, over the correct um, lines, month. So I'm tick spreading and um, I'll, uh, I'll just uh, accept this one so I can improve this one a bit and <clears throat> apply my spreading. What I can now do is um, uh, put this into a separate version by clicking this bu uh, button, version management, and uh, I'm going to save it as a new version, uh, which I give a name, uh, budget version one. So that version is now being saved as a separate version. If I go back to my analysis, I can bring back that element into my, um, <clears throat> into my analysis that we already created. So I'm going to select my chart and add this budget version one to it. And we can put that in another color so that you can clearly see it. And over here you can see comparing um, the two budget lines, I can even create a variance line in it to quickly see, really show you what exactly was being changed. So let us select store three budget versus store three. And I now choose over here budget version one and the display options are over here. I'm going to invert the colors that you can see. And over here you can see a clear comparison on my adjustments that I created to my planning model. Thanks for your attention.